explains the significant stat there. Both fighters entered the ring somewhat lighter than in their more recent appearances. Tyson, in his last fight against Steve Zowski, was over 220 pounds, today at 215. And Tillis, in his most recent bout with Terrell Biggs on January 25, fought at over 214 pounds. Today, he is 207 and three quarters. The referee is Joe Cortez. There are three judges who will score the fight on the round system with supplemental point scoring in case of a draw. Three knockdown rule is in effect. No standing eight count. The mandatory eight count is in effect. Tyson in the black trunks and James Quick Tillis in the white. Customarily, Mike Tyson does not feel his opponents out in round one. He tries to take them out. He tried to take Quick Tillis out with that first punch he threw and Tillis showed why he may be a little bit different. He moved right out of the way of it. Mike missed by quite a bit. The key to the fight will be Tyson cutting off the ring and pinning Tillis in corners and on the ropes like he did right there. Quick Tillis is seven pounds lighter than when he fought uh, Terrell Biggs. That would indicate, the look of him would indicate he's in much better condition. I think the postponement allowed him to get in better condition, will allow him to move more. The question is how long can he move? His record is he's dangerous early, Jim. Can hurt you with either hand early in the fight, but has always faded and tired badly. See Tillis delivering the left jab and following with the right. He is not running away from Tyson, and Tyson goes to work on the body. Some say that what sets Tyson apart is the intensity and the effect of his attack to the body. It, it is amazing to see such a young fighter understand so well the importance of body punching. Generally, it, it takes a, a veteran to understand that by punching the body, you can take all that movement away from James Tillis, and that's what Mike Tyson plans to do. You saw Tyson with the left hook splitting Tillis's guard and getting the punch through moments ago as he had Tillis in the corner. Joe Cortez, the referee, the only one of the three judges in Las Vegas a few weeks ago who scored the Larry Holmes-Michael Spinks fight in favor of Holmes. That was an excellent right uppercut by Quick Tillis, which is a punch that should be effective against someone who comes in burrowing in like Tyson does. For some reason, Tillis landed. He was so shocked he grabbed. Quick Tillis cannot, in my opinion, win a decision in this fight, Jim. He has to try to take Tyson out while he's fresh. You see that Tillis grabs Tyson behind the head when he ties a fighter up. He customarily does it by tying them up behind the head. That will not deter Tyson from flailing away at the body, as he did right there. And Joe Cortez, the referee, quite properly did not break the fighters because Tyson's hands were not tied up. Again, the right uppercut just missed that time by Tillis. Late in round one, a round in which Tillis has not acquitted himself too badly, as he has managed to stay away from Tyson's Thunderbolts, although he just took a right hand. We'll be back. Oh. We bring you back for round two, and you hear the bell. As you saw before we went away, Tyson did land one punch after the bell had sounded to end round one. Most people in boxing, if they're looking for a way to beat Mike Tyson, believe it will be done by a fighter who is able to move and punch effectively on the move, as Henry Tillman did in winning two fights of Tyson in the Olympic trials as amateur. All right, bring out, bring out, bring out the come on. Bring Tyson come on, come on, just landed two solid left hands. Hand. The difference, obviously, is here Mike Tyson has 10 rounds to wear down his opponent. He had to go all out in the three rounds, amateur limit. Lost to Tillman in the Olympic trial. Right hand lands flush on the cheek of Quick Tillis, but that was an extended right hand. He was not in close enough to do maximum damage. Yeah, but he's not letting go of Mike Tyson. He might be shaking his hand, which, which generally means that he was hurt by the punch, even though it was, as you say, extended. Simply a matter here of Tyson finding the range. He can't be too far outside, but he can't get so close that he allows Tillis to grab him, as Tillis will always do when Mike lets him. Tyson can be hit. 
He was openly disappointed with the number of times that Steve Zowski landed on him in his last fight. Any custom auto trained fighter prides himself on his defense. And Mike really was disappointed that uh, Zowski hit him with some right hands, really silly right hands that he should not have been hit with. It was just a loss of concentration. The right hand by Tellus was blocked there. A jab by Mike Tyson, a rare punch for him in his first 19 fights. A punch that he is smart enough to know that he's going to need if he's going to move up to world-class competition. He's been using it more in training and says he will see a lot more of it in this fight. He just tried it there until till it's knocked down two of them. Good head movement by Tyson coming in. Tyson is not nearly as busy as he has been in some of his previous fights against much lesser opponents. No doubt a sign of the respect that he must have for a fighter of Tillis' experience. There's the punch that, in my opinion, is going to win the fight for Tyson. It's that right hand to the body. He won't knock Tillis out with it, but he will wear him down and bring his hands down so he can land punches to the head. He got him with the left. And you saw Tillis staggering backward momentarily. Not seriously hurt, but Tyson has begun to break through the guard around the face. And there's a right hand as Tyson continues to land at round two ends. Back in Glens Falls, New York, for the beginning of round three. More than 8,000 people here in the Glens Falls Civic Center. Almost all of them rooting for the fighter that Upper New York State thinks of as its own Mike Tyson. Right now, all of the aggression is out of Mike Tyson. He is keeping his distance. He's trying to learn how to box with James Quick Tillis. It is not, or has not been to date, his fight. So if Quick Tillis has done nothing else, at the present time, he's taken Mike Tyson out of his game plan. Tillis tying Tyson's left arm up there. Tillis' trainer and co-manager, Bo Williford, said that he had been working with him for the last six weeks, tying up Tyson's arms. At that time, Tyson got the left hand through again after ducking a Tillis punch. Just one punch for Mike, and that's not typical. He has to put punches together when he gets inside. Keep busy. Outstrength Tillis on the inside and let his hands go. He is being considerably more careful than in his previous 19 appearances. Remember against Jesse Ferguson, that he, look at the hand speed by Tyson. That's one of the things that's astonishing, to see a man of this size and this build with such quick hands. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line that we'll be taking a station break right here at the end of this round, round three. I was saying in the fight against Jesse Ferguson, Ferguson fought a negative fight, fought to survive for the most part. The punch that turned the fight around was a, a combination, actually, a right to the body and then doubling with it, coming right up the middle. Looks to me like Tillis is open for an uppercut up the middle the same way. Come on, get those arms out. Come on, work out of there. This is an important learning experience for Mike Tyson. He's going to have to be able to handle a quick Tillis to get to the top of the event. He is right now. Tillis. Tillis is making a mistake of trying to trade with Mike Tyson. He should be moving off the ropes. Instead, he got into a little bit of macho there, and Quick Tillis is not going to be around long fighting that way. Again, he scores with the right uppercut. Does Quick Tillis. Repeatedly, Tillis has scored with the right uppercut. But Tyson is beginning to wear down Tillis' defenses, particularly when he catches him against the ropes and then releases the hands. Round three coming to a close, and Mike Tyson warms to the task once again as the round comes to a close. Back with more after this word from our local station. Your next truck, and your next one. Beginning of round four, Jim Lampley with Alex Wallow in Glens Falls, New York.
If you are scoring in rounds, as they do here in New York State, I have the first round even, and have given rounds two and three to Mike Tyson. Right hand lands on the point of the chin, but he didn't get off. And a good left hook by James Tillis. And again, inexplicably, Quick Tillis grabs after he scores the best punch he scored in a couple of rounds. He should put punches together, punch in combination, and he might give Mike Tyson more trouble than he wants. He also can't lunge in with that left hook like that because he's going to get caught. And having felt what Tillis has to offer in the way of the uppercut and that one left hook which scored, Tyson now appears to be a little less shy about stepping up inside. But Tillis is landing punches. He's landing hard punches, and interestingly, Mike Tyson is taking them. I mean, he doesn't want to get hit with them, but one of the questions about him, as it is with all developing fighters, is can he take a punch? Quick Tillis has had people like Carl Williams on the deck twice, Greg Page on the deck, Marvis Fraser hurt. He can punch when he's fresh like this. Switches left-handed. Tillis is a converted southpaw. Punches hardest with his left hook. What is an amateur? What as a southpaw is an amateur, turned around in the middle of his amateur career. Both of those left hooks miss slightly for Tyson. But how low he gets to duck under those punches. Extraordinary. Tillis could have butted him with his knee there. Right now, Mike Tyson is having problems solving James Quick Tillis. He doesn't really know. The things that work for him normally are not working for him, and he's going to have to go to things that are a little bit more sophisticated. He's going to have to cut the ring off better, and he's going to have to find the range better. He just can't walk inside and let Tillis tie him up like that. Has to let his hands be busier. And at the same time, avoid getting hit himself. As for Tillis's chin, you might note that a long time ago, in 1981, he went 15 rounds with the very dangerous puncher, Mike Weaver, largely by staying away. But on the other hand, he suffered a technical knockout in the first round against Tim Witherspoon two and a half years ago. You'd have to say that is a fluke, the loss to Witherspoon. Uh, Tillis claims he slipped on some water in the corner and was distracted before he got punched. Again, he lunges in against Cole. The left hand drops Tillis onto the seat of his pants as round four is coming to a close. I'm not so sure that his left, his, his right foot wasn't stepped on, causing that knockdown. There was definitely a punch, but I believe that Tillis's right foot was stepped on by Tyson at the moment the blow landed. All right, let's stay right here and take one more look at the knockdown. I'm clearly wrong. That was just a clean punch. He was off balance. We talked. We said that Tillis could not lunge in with the left hook. He lunges in with the left hook. Tyson very cleverly slips it, comes back in a punching position, and lands a left hook. That was not the full power of Mike Tyson, but Tillis had lunged, was off balance, and he was able to drop it. Let me repeat that there was no tripping involved. It was a clean punch. There is the Tyson corner. You see Kevin Rooney in the year of Tyson, another custom auto trained fighter. The longest Tyson bout was the fight against Jesse Ferguson. A TKO at one minute, 19 seconds of the sixth round. Now round five begins here in Glens Falls. still willing to trade leather with Tyson. I don't think that was a punch. The knockdown punch was a punch that hurt Quick Tillis. Right, bring up. Bring up. It definitely got his attention, but he wasn't debilitated by it. It's not a, that was not looking, it did not look to me to be the beginning of the end. He might have learned not to lunge so badly with the left hand, though. And there you see Tyson whacking away to the rib cage with the right hand. Again, Cortez warns Tillis for holding behind the head, Tillis switches briefly to southpaw and goes back. And again, he holds behind the head. Mike Tyson is not doing his job in those clinches. His hands are free, but he isn't using them. Right there, there's no reason for Mike not to rip punches to the body. We talked about his ability as a body puncher. He has it, 
He just isn't using it. All right, bring up. Let's go, step back. Tillis turns away for a moment to spit, but so far, he does not look hurt, as Alex pointed out. It looks rather fresh. Has had a tendency in the past to tire. This is not a good round so far for Tyson, who is missing more punches than he lands. And again, not busy in the clinch. That's frankly astonishing, because the opportunity is there for him to do a lot of damage. There, he gave a half-hearted effort at that combination we talked about, the right to the body and the right uppercut, but he didn't land it. He did land punches at the end of the flurry. And that's what he has to do with Tillis. He has to keep punching. He's just letting isolated punches go. Like a single left hook, nothing behind it. He has to punch in combination to be effective. There's a great tendency here to compare Tyson to another young heavyweight, Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist Terrell Biggs. Tillis extended Biggs to the full eight rounds where Biggs got the decision, and that was on January 25. Two good short chopping right hands by Tillis. Tyson waiting for Tillis to open up, and those two body punches did get Tillis' attention, and he grabs. Just the grimace on his face alone, I think, indicates that Quick Tillis was hurt by those two body punches. And the right hand got through the guard onto the cheek of Tillis, who looks a little the worse for wear now in the last minute of round five. So after a slow first minute and a half in this round, Mike Tyson has reapplied the pressure. And if he's shown you one thing today, it is that he knows how to close out a round and leave an impression in the minds of the judges. We'll be back right after this. We are back for round six. And it's a piece of trivia at best, but now Tillis has an opportunity to go farther with Tyson than any of his previous opponents if he can last past 119 of this round. Well, I think if Mike continues to fight this way, uh, Tillis has the chance to, be the, to break the knockout string. Uh, he's got to be busier. Tillis does have a tendency to tire very badly in late rounds. He was exhausted at the end of his eight-round fight with... Uh, Tyrell Biggs, and this is a 10-round fight. But Mike Tyson has to throw punches that mean something and throw them in combination. Those are just arm punches. There's nothing on those punches. He's just count the number of effective punches that Mike is letting go. They're very few. He's just trailing Tillis around the ring. Not cutting it off effectively. Come on, work out of there. Come on, work out of your hands. Allowing himself to get tied up, accepting clinches. Now the crowd begins to implore Tyson to give them something a little bit more exciting than what he has demonstrated here. And now it becomes clear that Tillis will last longer than anyone else has as we have just passed the point at which Jesse Ferguson was bid to stop by Luis Rivera in Troy, New York a couple of months ago. That punch missed, despite the crowd reaction. Since we are talking about the possibility of the fight going the distance, scoring at the halfway point, I've given Tyson three rounds, Tillis one round and one round even. I did not score the fourth round, which is the round in which a knockdown, a 10-8 round for Tyson. I only gave it a 10-9 round for Tyson uh, because of the, uh, the fact that uh, Tillis was dominating the round up to that point. The point system is, of course, supplemental only. The round system stands up unless there is a draw. Personally, Alex, I have it 4-0-1 for Tyson. I've not given Tillis a round. Two ways of looking at what Mike is doing. Uh, one way is to say that uh, he's pacing himself, he's waiting for the opening. The other way is to say that he's getting frustrated and getting taken out of his fight. There was moments ago a brief combination to the body of the kind of rapid fire punching that you expect from Tyson, but that was one of a very few times, perhaps the only time in the bout when we've seen it. But again, he comes on at the end of the round. 
We are all the way through round six. Mike Tyson and James Dillis will be back. Radio Shack. We are back, and for the first time in a professional career which began 13 months ago, Mike Tyson enters round seven. Another heavyweight. Tyson with the lead in the fight to this point over James Quick Tillis. But fighting a curiously docile fight so far. Not nearly as busy or as aggressive as we've seen him in his 19 previous outings, which resulted in 19 knockouts. He almost looks right here like he's waiting for Tillis to, to make the fight, to come to him. In case you've just joined us, it is Tillis, the fighting cowboy from Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the white trunks. Tyson in the black. Tyson co-managed by Jim Jacobs and Bill Caton. Tillis co-managed by Bo Williford and Gary Bentley. One curious thing that we learned before the fight about Tillis's condition, we said he's always tired late. Uh, Bo Williford and Gary Bentley found out after the big fight, through the doctor's examination, that James Tillis has a number of allergies. Among them, allergic to milk, citrus, and wheat, which could make things difficult for a fighter who, on the day of a fight, eats wheat cakes, drinks milk, and orange juice. There you go, come on, there you go, James. We have to assume that that was not his pre-fight meal today. Oh. He actually was eating mainly uh, cranberry juice. But it has helped his stamina, and I think he also trained harder for this fight. He realizes this fight means everything to him. He has lost four of his last five. And Bo Williford told me last night that if Tillis were to be knocked out today and wanted to continue as a fighter, he would do so without the help of Bo Williford. Yeah, this is career time for, for James Quick Tillis. Incidentally, if you're not a boxing fan and Tillis looks familiar to him, you may have seen him in the movie The Color Purple, where he had a brief part as Henry Buster Broadnax in the juke joint scenes. It's been two and a half weeks with Steven Spielberg and crew in Los Angeles, where they called him Dark Gable. There's a right hand by Tyson. And the uppercut. Tillis is not noticeably hurt by that punch. But he's cut. There is blood above his left eye. Exactly right. Mike was a little bit extended with the punch, did not have the proper range for full power. Now he's at the right range, though. He lands something here. This is where he can be effective. Again, not punching at the body when Tillis grabs him behind the head. Tillis landed a left, didn't seem to phase Tyson at all. We will stay here between rounds, as it is Tillis who tries to flurry at the end of round seven with the blood now seeping out from an apparent cut above the left eye. Bill Nunnery does the cuts for, Bo well, actually, Bo Williford is doing the cut himself right now. Doctor in looking at it. As we look at Tyson's corner, the action is in the opposite corner, right there where they are working on James Quick Tillis's left eye. Let's take a look back. At the action from round number seven. You see what, Till, uh, what Tyson did there? He scored the right hand to the body, missed with the right uppercut that we said he, we thought he could land if he kept throwing it, but continued to punch. And eventually that will pay dividends. He has to continue to back up uh, Tillis and continue to cut the ring off on him to be able to score effectively. I want to give James Quick Tillis credit. He's been in with a tough young bull. And he's fought harder and, and stronger, really, than I've ever seen him fight in his career, including the time he fought for the title. He is showing something that a lot of people have questioned over his career, and that is his heart. He's cut, he's taken some brutal punches, and he is fighting back, moving, and still trying to win this fight. One of the greatest trainers in the history of the sport openly questioned Tillis' heart while he was working with him. Angelo Dundee worked with Quick Tillis for the Weaver fight and some subsequent fights. He finally just gave up. He said James had no spirit to fight. Tillis told us in the pre-fight interview that he found that spirit. Didn't know why he'd never had it, but said he found it for this fight. He was going to be a different fighter, and he has been. 
cannot question his courage or his commitment today. He has been there from the opening bell. He has not run away as he did 15 rounds against Weaver in 1981. Tyson looped that right hand, and you have to wonder if perhaps Tyson is getting a bit anxious. We are into round eight. The knockout string has been a prominent part of the marketing and publicity which has surrounded Tyson's rise. It won't be quite the same if he's 20 and 0 with 19 knockouts. There, there's no question that up till now, if the fight continues this way and goes to a decision, Tyson, in my opinion, will win the decision, but the Mike Tyson mystique will suffer. He has not scored a knockout. He has not really hurt Quick Tillis, even though he has knocked him down and cut him. Uh, and he's let Till, uh, Tillis in the, stay in the fight when other fighters, such as a Tyrell Biggs, really had to... Uh, Tillis out of the fight and in more trouble. In fairness to Tyson, we should repeat, Tillis appears to be in much better condition for this fight. Could that, in fact, Alex, be good for Mike Tyson? Yeah, I think ultimately you're exactly right, Jim. This kind of a fight is absolutely essential to his learning experience. It's obvious for a fighter who punches with as much power and who places as much of his fight plan on power as Tyson does, that any kind of movement cuts down on his power because it doesn't let him set himself as well. It was inevitable that he was going to have to learn how to fight a guy who could move and box. It's good that he's fighting one like Quick Tillis uh, to get that learning experience. And maybe if he has to go to decision to win the fight, then there won't be as many people asking every day, when are you going to fight for the championship of the world? Those same people who are questioning his chin and his ability to go round will turn around now, since he's demonstrated that he has not gotten exhausted and he's taken good punches, will now turn around and say, well, he can't punch. Mike Tyson just went left-handed, and that was decidedly left-handed. It's the first time he's been that committed to a left-hand stance since his fourth professional fight. It means he's a little bit confused, a little bit frustrated, and he's willing to try anything new right now. We are back in Glens Falls, New York. James Quick Tillis enters round nine with 19-year-old knockout phenomenon Mike Tyson. And in Tyson's round, or in Tyson's corner between rounds, trainer Kevin Rooney was imploring him to keep punching, not to stop punching, particularly in the clinches. Come on, work out of guys. Come on. Which is exactly what Mike just did. He was in tight, his hands were free, and he did not punch. This Mike Tyson looks very much like the Mike Tyson who lost two close decisions to Henry Tillman in the heavyweight uh, trials for the Olympic Games in 1984. He is confused by the movement. The movement does not allow him to, to hit uh, a stationary target and therefore he can't set himself as well. We have not seen the evidence of the jab that Mike Tyson said we would see. And Henry Tillman recently scored a first round knockout over Bash Ali in a cruiserweight fight. Could he be, in his own way, Alex Wallow, progressing at just as impressive a rate as Tyson? Well, Henry Tillman was very impressive winning the North American Boxing Federation Cruiserweight title uh, by scoring a sensational first-round knockout over Bash Ali, as you pointed out. It's difficult to judge because, first of all, I haven't seen all of Henry Tillman's fights, and second of all, uh, he hasn't fought uh, in the same division as Mike. He's been fighting as a cruiserweight. There's not uh, as much talent down there. It's difficult to say. I was very impressed with Tillman against Bash Ali. He will be, inevitably, a future opponent of Mike Tyson, as will Terrell Biggs and a number of other of these young heavyweight prospects. Coming up immediately after this fight, our coverage of the Kentucky Derby, beginning of ABC Sports, run through the Triple Crown this spring. Right now we are in round nine. Mike Tyson well ahead in the scoring, or so we would judge it, against James Tillis. But looking for a knockout to keep his 19 knockout string alive. I'm not sure he is looking for a knockout, Jim. He, I mean, he certainly isn't fighting like someone who is. It's possible that, number one, he, he doesn't know how to knock Tillis out. Tillis has presented a problem to him in terms of power punching that he can't solve. But secondly, it's also possible that Mike Tyson is interested in how he is going to react to fighting rounds. He's heard all the doubters say he can't go uh, 10 rounds or 15 rounds, and maybe he's in the back of his mind trying to find out exactly is how he is going to respond in that kind of a fight. 
uh, that he is in no danger, in my opinion, of losing. Maybe in the front of his mind. 22 seconds remaining in round nine. More and more, it looks as though Tillis is going to be able to go the distance. And Tyson, again, is not busy during the clinches. When his hands are free and he has a chance to punch. Landed a right hand on Tillis's nose, but again, from a long enough distance that it didn't damage Tillis. We have gotten to the end of round nine. We'll be back for the closer after this. Power. We are back in Glens Falls, New York, round 10. The crowd tries to liven itself up, try to provide some encouragement to Mike Tyson. Most of them have come here today hoping to see a knockout and, frankly, expecting to see a knockout. Tyson tries to deliver with the right hand and steps in and throws the left. Tillis again ties him up. James Tillis is still a dangerous fighter. This is the, the most power and zip he's had in his punches at this late stage in a fight that I can ever remember. Tyson knows it, and I just don't think he's going to take any unnecessary chances. You can be sure he wants to keep the knockout string alive. But he also is just not going to take any unnecessary chances. He wants to win a decision, win a fight. He'll be 20 and 0, still undefeated, and in his mind, I think, still well on the way to a heavyweight championship. But Tillis have revived his career somewhat, even with a loss, if he stands up. Well, this certainly is a respectable showing, and there certainly will be notoriety to the man who broke Mike Tyson's knockout string, especially if Mike resumes the knockout string after this fight. Always difficult to know why a crowd is booing. You can't psychoanalyze 8,000 people. I think it's possible that they're disappointed in Mike's performance. They came here wanting to see what, him do what he's done in his previous 19 fights, and he doesn't appear at this point to be going all out to satisfy them. Landed the left hand, but Tillis stood right there. Cut is no longer a problem. It has been effectively stopped. Tillis comes straight in. And now Tyson, one of the few times we've ever seen him swinging wildly. Good left hand. Tillis is still there. slightly different in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Tillis continues to give a good account of himself. And backs Mike Tyson up onto the ropes, which is a first. A little of Tyson's own medicine. It will be interesting to see how Mike reacts to this. Closing with a flurry. The bell is going to send. of Bo Williford as he steps into the ring. I think he's quite proud. Win or lose of James Tillis. Mike Tyson comes back and gets wiped off by Kevin Rooney. We will have the decision very shortly, but there is another big story in boxing which surfaced just this past week. The reported intention of we are back live in Glens Falls, New York, and in the middle of the ring, ring announcer Paul Lefleur with the decision. Ladies and in this gentlemen, fight. here is the official scoring. Judge Bernie Friedkin scores it six rounds to four. Judge Al Reed scores it six rounds to four. Judge Tony Murat scores it eight rounds to two. Defeated Mike Tyson. So for 19-year-old Mike Tyson, move the record now to 19, or make it 20 wins, no losses, 19 of them by knockout. Now, 
Stay tuned for one of the most prestigious and exciting events in sports coming up next, the 112th running of the Kentucky Derby. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. I'm Jim Lampley along with Alex Wallow saying so long for now from Glens Falls, New York.